started. It's a little afternoon, and so we'll probably run a little longer just so we have an entire hour. And uh, let me welcome you all here today. Uh, the general consensus is we're not sure if the weather could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> Although, snow, 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 there you go. Um, I am Nancy Freeman, and I am the director of the Women in Leadership Archives here at Loyola. And as that bright light shining in my eyes, I thought I should let you all know a couple things. We are being um, paid for Can TV, which is a public access channel here in Chicago. So how exciting, and eventually that will be available uh, via YouTube. And then I think someone is also right. Uh, <laughs> we are being live streamed also uh, for the Center for Textual Studies and Digital Humanities. So we've got all sorts of electronic taping. <laughs> Um, again, I'd like to welcome you all. This lunch is sponsored by both the WLA and the Center for Textual Studies and Digital Humanities. It's kind of a combination program. Um, the center has been hosting brown bags this fall once a month to uh, publicize their activities and talk about digital humanities initiatives. Um, and so uh, Dr. Kyle Roberts, who's the head of the Center for Textual Studies and Digital Humanities, asked me to speak in October. Uh, about this exhibit uh, and the Women in Labor Project, and we decided to make it a combination, um, both as a brown bag lunch without the brown bag, <laughs> and, and a celebration of um, this exhibit, uh, the Women in Labor uh, Project, uh, the story of Molly West. So first what I'd like to do is uh, do a few opening remarks, some, and that will include some thank you. And then I'm going to turn it over to Caroline Lynn Yanakopoulos, um, who's going to give you a brief overview of Molly West's life, and then a quick tour of the exhibit. In that, Caroline will also explain how she created the exhibit, some of those technical kinds of details that I think some of you would like to know about. And then Dr. Kyle Roberts is going to say a few words. Um, we will also leave time, uh, probably 10 or 15 minutes, for questions or comments at the end. A couple of housekeeping details, so vital. Uh, the bathrooms are in the basement. You can access them either out the door and all the way down the stairs through the other door or uh, via the elevator. For those of you off campus, um, the other big important thing in Chicago is parking. Um, I have free parking passes for you. I know. <laughs> That's exciting. So see me afterwards if you parked in the parking garage. I came to the WLA about three and a half years ago, and as I became familiar with collections, the collection of Molly West stood out in living color. The records we have cover almost Molly's entire life from her birth in 1916 and run up until about 10 years of her death before she passed away. The breadth and depth of the records are incredible. They detail a life of activism, in many areas, and primarily in uh, the women and labor movement. Molly spent the last few life, years of her life in a nursing home, and she died last August 2015. And it was then that I met her son, Steve West, who we're very pleased to have here from California. And his friend, Jody, who also came, and so we are very uh, very excited about that. And it was also last year that I became acquainted with the Illinois Labor History Society, of which Molly had been a secretary and um, a big longtime volunteer. The Labor History Society put together a program last October, um, a kind of a celebration of Molly's life, and we invited family, friends, and folks to share memories. And it was after that program that I thought, oh my gosh, we should do something. Um, along the lines of an online exhibit, which we had done before, but there should be a way that we should publicize her life of activism and increase awareness of our collections, and I got very excited about that. And then I met with Dr. Kyle Roberts, who, as many of you know, um, I believe is an idea-generating energizer bunny. <laughs> um, and that's, a, that's a big compliment. Um, and he suggested that not only do we do an online exhibit, some different ways that we could do that, but we make um, an overall project and that we have other phases and aspects of it down the road. And so we plan for that from the beginning. And so 
the Women in Labor, Labor Project was born. In the future, we hope to do some oral histories with other uh, women labor leaders in Chicago. We hope to involve other classes at Loyola, possibly some um, uh, high school students in the area, and of course, history fair, which are middle school and high school students who use primary sources for um, contest here in the area. Before I turn the program over to Caroline, who's going to give you all the details, um, I would like to do some thank yous. And normally these are left to the end, but because these are so important, I would like to do them um, right now. So first, the funders. The majority of these funds that were raised paid for Caroline to work from May through August to create the exhibit. And those who, uh, who contributed were Steve West, Molly's son, the Illinois Labor History Society, CLUE, the Coalition of Labor Union Women, Chicago Chapter, and the Gannon Center for Women and Leadership, and University Libraries. Uh, women's Studies and Gender Studies, also from Loyola. In addition, the Center for Textual Studies, uh, Textual Studies and Digital Humanities um, provided us with a grant that we had applied for to digitize um, some VHS tapes and cassette tapes in Molly's collection. And the reason that I think that that is so important is uh, in the little tour Caroline will give you is that we tell you about events in Molly's life, we show them to you, and then she speaks about them, which I think is very, very powerful to hear her voice in that. So thank you, funders, very much. I think they need a round of applause. <laughs> The second set of thank yous uh, goes to a phenomenal exhibit team that we put together to guide the whole creation of this. And those folks are Michelle Nickerson from the History Department, Kathleen Mosweigert from Sociology, uh, Stephanie um, Sewell Porcato, who was with the uh, Illinois Labor History Society and is no longer, but she was on the committee. And, <laughs> and um, that's the contingency there from the circle. Um, and Dr. Kyle Roberts, who uh, not only is the Energizer Bunny, but also is the local expert. He helped us a ton with the Onika exhibit. Um, and last but certainly not least is uh, Caroline, uh, Caroline Lynn who I will probably embarrass tremendously um, by giving her all these compliments. But they are well deserved. Caroline graduated from in May from Loyola's Public History Program and um, has done a phenomenal job on this exhibit. Her hard work and dedication and creativity will show through um, and she's been a joy to work with. The entire team was fantastic, so let's give the team and Caroline a round. All those thank yous and details done, I'm going to turn it over to Caroline, and she will uh, tell a little bit about Molly's life in the exhibit. joined the Young Communist League when she was just a teenager, where she learned about co community organization and activism. She was an organizer for the Communist Party for many years, finally leaving the party in 1960 due to the pressures of the Red Scare and to focus on taking care of her family. She supported the steel strikers at the Republic Steel Strike of 1937 and witnessed the brutal deaths of the Memorial Day Massacre. After that day, she dedicated her life to the labor movement and was present on every picket line and supported every worker strike that she could. She joined the printing trade at a time when women were not welcome in the printing trade. And she became a strong voice in the typographical union. 
She accomplished many firsts while, work, while in the union, becoming the first woman elected to um, a leadership position while in the typographical union. <coughs> For decades, she pushed the limits placed on women so that their unique needs as workers would be recognized by unions. And she did all of these things as a single working mother raising her son. Molly was a founding member of the Coalition of Labor Union Women, an organization that bridges the labor movement and the women's movement. She continued to be active in this and other organizations and labor unions her entire life. After retiring from the printing trade, she volunteered full-time as secretary for the Illinois Labor History Society, where she worked to make sure that labor history and the history of women in the labor movement were preserved and remembered. Molly West died in 2015 at the age of 99. This is just a brief introduction to Molly's life. There are too many stories and too many accomplishments to talk about, which is why we created this exhibit um, to share all of those things. This exhibit used the extensive collection at the WLA of photographs, objects, and uh, documents to share the story of Molly's life and um, use that as a lens to talk about the contributions of women in the labor movement. We put a lot of research and planning, of course, into this project. And um, one of the first decisions um, that we made was what platform to use for the exhibit. Initially going in, I um, expected to use Omeka, which is a program that has a lot of plugins, and you can um, do a lot with those plugins to create really creative exhibits. But as we went into um, the structure that we wanted, it really didn't. The plugins really didn't offer the flexibility that I that I wanted for the project um, and the look that I wanted. And I also sustainability was also a concern because I wanted the exhibit to be easy to maintain and manage um, for future, future WLA staff and driver assistance. So with those things in mind, I um, looked into using WordPress.com. So um, WordPress offered me a little more flexibility and the ability <coughs> to um, link pages and organize pages the way that I wanted. It really, the theme that I chose really lets the photos and images shine, as you can see on each page. We did use um, Omeka for one part of this exhibit, and that is what it was originally created for, is to house the visual collection. So with any photo in the exhibit, you can click on the photo and it will take you to this page in the Omeka collection where you can learn more about the date and the photos um, from the archival collection. Um, going into this, we wanted the, the site to be useful for a variety of audiences, academic researchers, um, just Chicago history buffs, women, women and men that were active in the labor movement and also history fair students, as Nancy mentioned. So with these things in mind, um, we wanted to make it so that you can both go through the story of Molly West's life, if you want to know the whole narrative, you can go through using, um, we have it organized into chapters, each representing certain themes and a period in Molly's life. We also wanted to make it um, easy for people who might only be interested in certain topics, and that's what these chapters are really useful, useful for. You can go to a certain chapter, which will lead you to the page that most interests you. At the beginning of each page, we have offered um, some historical context. Uh, we tried to keep it brief, even though it uh, it was 
very difficult because there are a lot of topics, a lot of themes, and a lot of important events from the labor movement that we wanted to include. But to, um, so we use the, this section just to give an introduction to these things and really set up the themes and highlight how women contributed um, to these events and in these periods of time. And it also set up the next portion of each page, which tells you about Molly's life and her contributions, what she was dealing with at these certain times. Interspersed with the text, of course, we have these amazing photos and different media, including videos of Molly telling her own story in her own words, which really help you connect to the events in history. In certain times where we wanted to add more, we sometimes had a learn more section at the bottom of the page for researchers who are really interested in that topic. So this labor and loss World War II page is one of my favorites. It, um, for one reason, it has a very emotional, romantic story about Molly during World War II and her first husband, Carl Lieber. But also, this is a great page. It really highlights how we use her collection and how extensive um, her archival collection is. We have great photos and then letters that Molly and Carl sent to each other daily um, during the 1940s. And we even added um, an extra page where you can go and read some of these letters. We have a huge collection of these, and here are just some examples that um, really tell you about day-to-day -day life, um, Molly's work, and Carl's experiences in the war. And at the bottom here, we have two great examples of the um, results of the grant we received from the Center for Textual Studies in Digital Humanities. With that grant, we were able, like Nancy mentioned, to digitize um, some VHS tapes and other media that we had never been able to watch or see before, including these two records. These records, um, Carl recorded personal messages to Molly and mailed them to Molly while he was um, serving in the Army. And so they have very touching messages to her and um, really offer another, just like the letters, another look into their experiences and the experiences of others like them dealing with this war. So that's just one of the examples of the pages, and I will show you another too that, that really highlights um, some of Molly's work in the labor movement and her um, her perseverance in becoming a leader and opening the door for women in unions. This page shows you some um, fantastic artifacts including these medallions that she wore at conventions. That's my favorite picture, but... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, there you go. And this is, actually, this video is from a reel-to-reel -reel audio tape that we also got to hear for the first time, in which Molly talks about um, her first convention with the typographical union, where she stood up to big conventions, and so it's a really funny story, and it's really great to hear it in her words. So that gives you a little look at what the new exhibit is and how it's fit together, how we've tried to structure it um, for the use of all kinds of people who might be interested in these topics, and to really highlight her <coughs> life, but also use Molly as an example dealing with things that many women did and accomplishing many things. <coughs> One thing that we did want to add to the exhibit were some oral history interviews that would offer perspectives from different people on, um, on Molly and on their own experiences in the labor movement. And we did run out of time to do that. I had the opportunity of um, interviewing Katie Jordan, who is a member of the Coalition for Virginia Women, and she gave told some wonderful stories about Molly and about her own experiences in um, labor. And we hope to be able to add that to the exhibit soon. And also, the WLA is working to hopefully someday do another um, Cities of Women Labor Project, do a lot of other oral histories to make
make sure that we preserve the history of other women and other reads in the labor movement. And that's about all I have. <coughs> Nancy and Caroline. It's fantastic to see a packed room for these. Uh, this is our second lunchtime lecture uh, of the fall semester, and we're going to need to find larger rooms if we're going to keep doing these events. So um, I just want to say how happy we were to be able to uh, help support this project. The Center uh, for Textual Studies and Digital Humanities is meant to be a broadly multidisciplinary research center, and it's here within the college. There are actually only two research centers in the college, um, and so we take very seriously trying to work across boundaries. I think many of you who are from the Loyola community might know a lot of people in your department, but it's sometimes hard to break out of that, uh, and this is really what we're trying to do. Uh, so we offer support for projects like this, for their development, for their management, uh, and for their publication. We like to organize events like this one, uh, where we uh, bring people together, lectures, symposia, conferences, uh, training workshops, and exhibitions. We also have an online, uh, a professional interdisciplinary master's in digital humanities. So if anybody is looking to learn new skills in the digital humanities, please let us know. We were very happy to be able to support this project specifically through a grant, uh, and maybe if, if time permits, we can actually play some of those. I think we were all we were teased. I think I want to hear what Carl had to say on those great records. Um, so it was really fantastic, and I think that's one way that the center can really help support, right? It provides funding that you wouldn't have otherwise to unlock these riches. Um, I'll say that I think you know, Matthew was very nice in thanking me. I think I probably got more out of it, having the chance to really work collaboratively with a fantastic team that was made up of people from academic departments, from community organizations who I wouldn't normally get to meet, uh, with the university libraries. And a lot, I think I want to give a special thanks to Margaret Heller, who I think really helped get the uh, Omeka site up. That's the backbone for the items behind it. I, I'm assuming you probably helped with the WordPress too, right? Okay. Not the WordPress. Okay, not the WordPress, right. Then I'll go to Carolyn. So the university libraries is another really important partner in this work. Um, and I think moving forward, it's going to be really exciting. I think what I want to encourage everyone in this room to do is think about the digital platforms that we have and how they can unlock the materials that we have, how we can make them more accessible. And if it's OK, if I can reserve the right to ask the first question, uh, Caroline. So Caroline is a fantastic graduate of our public history program. And I'm curious, Caroline, if you could reflect a little on what was the the most exciting opportunity, but also the biggest challenge in moving from all of these boxes of archives that you had been working with for quite some time into something like this, into a digital platform. What was the, what did you find as your, what was the biggest challenge maybe you had in making that transition, but also what were you most excited about to be able to do that? Um, so, working at the WLA like any time you look into a collection you learn more things about her life like something some other cool thing that she had done and so that was really exciting to me have time to dedicate to learning as much as I could about Molly West and trying to put together a narrative of her life um, you'll see in the exhibit there's just countless cool little things that she accomplished and was a part of um, and the difficult thing what was I mean, challenge? It was challenging to, um, because there was so much information, I think it was challenge, the biggest challenge was just organizing that into um, these different topics and trying to um, put it in context of Chicago's history and the broader history of the labor movement and be concise because that's um, something you want to try to do when you're in this uh, online format, try to make it so people can find the 
that was also a huge challenge because I, I should have counted how many boxes we have. We just have <laughs> so much information. And I only partially joke that when I start talking to people about Molly West, I actually really can't do it because I just go on and on because it, it's very difficult to, to encapsulate and throw into that well. So um, any other questions? I, um, this is a great project, and thank you so much for working on it. And I, following up on that topic of needing to be concise in creating a website, so this is for Carolyn. Um, I, I, and I, it's hard to tell just from not messing with the site myself here. But I noticed in the little, you said that you wrote sort of introductions to each chapter, right? Um, did you put hyperlinks into it to like bring people to, if they're, oh, this is interesting, and it sort of takes you off? Did you? May have to make a decision about whether you're going to put hyperlinks in or not, and did you add in a, a bibliography? You said, like, there's sort of more information below if you want to know more. So if somebody's going through it and they want to know more, they have a lot about Molly, but then maybe about that time period to find out more information. I guess I'm just curious how you make that decision about what to put in and what not to put in. Sure. Just to not overload people. Right. right? It's just really difficult. Never stop. Yeah. Right. Yes, because there are books, I mean, it could be books about put hyperlinks into each page. I tried to just be concise and then I did I do have a bibliography on about this project okay. um, that lists all of the different sources, books and um, websites that were helpful to me in my life. Um, and I also do link to the Illinois Labor History Society because they do have a lot on their website too. Um, so hopefully people will learn more from right on the Friday of Labor Day, which we, we did the happy dance that we <laughs> had it up right on that Friday. Um, in terms of History Fair, we do partner, and Lisa, who is from History Fair, is, is back here, so I might let her talk for a moment. But um, when you go out, you will see some handouts, some cards, card, we put those in the History Fair teacher's packets. Um, and I know that Lisa and the other History Fair folks are big supporters of the WLA, so they promote that. Um, I'm, we'll see how much gets used this year, and then hopefully maybe more, and partnering with specific classes. We've done that in the past. Um, some folks have brought their classes to the WLA for History Fair. So I think what we'll do is work with History Fair folks to figure out kind of how to make inroads in that. So a little bit little bit of both. So I don't know if Lisa has anything to add to that. Um, I have my hat on today as, um, as someone that knew um, Molly for a couple of decades as well as History Fair and so um, I've just been really thrilled with the site and, and exploring it. Um, um, among these other uses of having students learn about the site and I think we have um, on our suggested topics for this year, which is taking a stand in history, and there's Molly across uh, the 20th century taking a stand. Um, so she, she's a, a subject that we're encouraging students to look at. Um, it's such a marvelous website itself and does so much of what um, we want students to do who choose to develop a website for their own history fair project that I've been thinking about, how can I use this to teach students how to do really good websites that have you know, a particular interpretation that does a beautiful, concise job with the context. You never are wondering where you are in history or where her own actions fit into the larger picture. And so that's kind of, um, both of the things are mulling about in my mind.
job with this typographical union, she put out the daily racing form, you know, before we had computers when you went to the racetrack, and often she would hold that up. And also, um, as you know, she was the only woman in the, um, you know, with all the men in the CFL, and she was never afraid to speak up and say something, but she would introduce herself as Brother Molly, <laughs> 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 so, Is that in there somewhere? Yes, actually, the when I brought up the uh, women in labor union leadership, the video I was talking about where yeah. she tells us that's the story she's telling oh, great. you great. about how she stood up and said, I'm Brother Molly West. <laughs> I also work for the Teachers Union, and we would be happy to work with you to disseminate it through our uh, way of getting out of our Chicago Union Teacher newspaper, the CPS Teacher. So that's another possibility. I didn't get to know Molly until 2001, I guess. And I had the good fortune when Lisa invited me to join the board of the Labor History Society to take Molly home after almost every board meeting because she lived here. She would tell me, especially about the war days and about you as a little boy. <laughs> and, 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 and they just, it was like a wonderful, wonderful window into the past. And she was almost exactly the same age as my own mother, who had died when I was quite young. And I just loved hearing her because it gave me a context also for my mother's life mm -hmm. as a Jewish immigrant woman, mm -hmm. uh, progressive. So, Thank you so much for this exhibit. It's a fabulous thing. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Other questions? Want to hear some Molly's story? Sure. Please.
there's so much in, in that exhibit that's really spectacular, is um, the, the coverage of uh, challenges that Molly had with anti-communism. Um, and it covers that period of history so well. Carolyn did a fabulous job with it. It's something that came up in our conversations a lot. And uh, so I think in terms of uh, what students, one of the things that um, they'll benefit Answers all our questions and solves all our problems, really. Um, and Sue, at least in that manner. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Sue, let's see, anybody else? All right. Well, thank you all very much for coming. And if you would like to talk with us or each other afterwards, feel free to do that. Um, and good luck out there. But. <laughs>